Hey folks, BFG Neil here. It's Friday the 25th of February. Sorry to my American friends, that's just the date order we use over here. It's time for another Helium News and FAQ video. Remember, if you want a question answered, please drop it in the comments below and I'll get to it in next week's video. Just want to say thanks again for your support. Uh, remember to drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Okay, let's get on with the news. The first news story I want to go over this week is that we've hit the 600,000 hotspot mark. This is massive for the network. You know, There's a rule called Moore's Law and it basically says that the network's worth is defined by the number of nodes. So there's 600,000 that is growing and there's you know some estimates of 2.5 to 3 million more hotspots coming. Just massive for the network that it's grown so fast and so well. And with all the changes coming up, we definitely need them. You know, HIP 44 and 45 have been approved now. So this means that we can get to the point where these things are plug and play. Because as any hotspot host will tell you right now, the network is not plug and play. You know, there's sync problems, relay problems, SD card problems, um, and just general peer to peer issues. So the set sooner that HIP 45 and light hotspots come in, the better. Up next is a shout out for the first grant awardee on this channel. This is from Big Dave Eakers. Um, he's got a new website called heliumanalytics.io. The first report he's produced is called the daily earnings summary. So at a quick glance, you can see how well the network's performing, you know, how much is being minted, what's the change from previous days. But what's interesting here is, is this is the first report that's not hidden behind on an ETL meter based server. So there's obviously some issues with people not being able to get in there. When they run queries, it's slow. And what you can see from this is I can just select another date and it instantly updates. So this is a very complex system that pulls the data from an ETL and, and does a regular sync with uh, JSON data and then displays it on the screen. As time goes on, Dave will be adding more and more reports, so please give this site a check. Up next is a tweet from Arman. Some of you may know him as Raw Man from the Helium server, but he also produces a series called the Hotspot Podcast. And he's worked with some population data with his ETL. And basically, it shows that 248.5 million people live within 400 meters of a hotspot. Can you imagine if they all had sensors? Which is what the network needs, right? You know, imagine if even a quarter of that number had sensors right now. You know, it's a perfect time for sensor solutions to exist and grow. And it's something I'm very focused on. Um, I have a beta of an asset tracking system coming out soon. So I'll do a standalone video on that. But what I'll also do is I'll link below in the description a link to the Helium Hacks Happy Hour session where we showed off a beta for it. So Invites for the beta will be going out soon and we have some very special news that we can't share just yet, but I'm sure you'll love it. The next news piece I want to cover is just for all you data junkies out there, you know, if you, you want to get your fix of data and what's happening on the network, the DUI ETL is back up. From what I understand, there is some data still filling in there, so reports can be behind a little bit, but it's good news that it's up and you can start getting your fix of data again. After what was obviously a confusing week for some hotspot owners with HIT 44 and 45, um, it was hard for people to realize that it was a good positive change for the network and a positive change for hotspot earnings. We have a new HIP. So we have HIP 56, Improved State Channel Disputes. Now state channels run asynchronously from the main blockchain so the chain isn't sl slowing down data usage. Everything on the state channel is settled. And sometimes they have a dispute, right? So this happened with Discovery and basically what happened was uh, no one could, there was too many disputes in at the same time and it meant that no one could settle and it caused some problems. So this hip improves that basically. Nothing really to worry about, no loss of earnings. It's just a nice easy hip that basically says the first dispute that comes in is the one that's picked. And just to confirm again, the first dispute that comes in is just handling data, so it's nothing to do with POC rewards, and it just means things like discovery mode can return without causing future problems. Up next, I wanted to talk about a new Gristle Crew community run by uh, Gristle King. So I'm sure many of you have heard of him. He was voted uh, most valuable community member last year. And he's now running a weekly Zoom meetup. So part of this weekly Zoom meetup, he's asked me if I would join and do a weekly news run over. So if you wanted to talk to me or ask me some questions, I'm going to be available next week. Um, the sessions start at 10 a.m. PST on Tuesday. So catch me there. Finally, the news that everyone's been waiting for um, from the clickbaity title, I'm sure that bought you here. Development timelines have been updated for light hotspots. So HIT 44 and 45 have been passed now. So we know there's a tentative Q1, Q2 release date for light hotspots. My, my guess is quarter two, but very early quarter two. Um, basically what happens is that the, the software goes out to them, but it's not used. There's a chain variable that changes to enable light hotspots. 
and then the miner gets deactivated. So this timeline means that, you know, there's a few weeks in between each step, several weeks later, obviously. So at least we'll be moving on and we'll be able to see progress happen. So we'll see the, the hotspots get the firmware, the chain variables be enabled to allow light hotspots. And then finally the miners being deactivated on hotspots. So we run in gateway RS only. And at that stage only is when we lose sync, we lose um, relay problems and everything will just be plug and play. Great news, right? And that's it for the weekly news. So last week was very um, draining, just trying to explain um, to everyone how HIT 44 and 45 was um, such an improvement for the network and will ultimately lead to better earnings for hotspots because of the consistency of them. So remember, if you have any projects that you'd like me to talk about on this video, please, please get in touch. I would love to promote you on this channel. So let's get on with your questions. And the first question of the week comes from Ilian, and he says, Hello Neil, thanks for the great video content. You're welcome buddy. I have a question. In the last two days I've noticed this type of error, invalid witness, witness on the incorrect channel. What can cause that? Um, unfortunately the error is that someone's bought the wrong frequency hotspot for your region. Um, and basically it can never be fixed until that person goes and gets a hotspot for the right region. So you just have to write that hotspot off. The next question of the week comes from Matthew Merriman. And he, he says, will Helium add a cable loss length type or any combination to the API? This would allow us to list true antenna gain, giving better insight into neighbors' hotspots and potential latency of other hotspots. Obviously a larger scale implementation similar to POC V11. Um, the, the simple answer is no. Um, it would just add too much bulk to the chain. What they recommend is that you actually take that loss off of the antenna. So if you have a six dBi antenna with two dBi of loss, you would take that off and put it in as a four. So you could be accurate in that sense, um, but they, they've never considered it so far. Up next, we've got a question from Mark Miller and he says, hey Neil, keep the content coming. Oh well buddy, I've got two rack miners deployed remotely that recently had a hard time resyncing to the blockchain. Both have 64 gigabyte SD cards. They're only a few hundred blocks behind and gaining height. But it's just enough to not stay out of the chain basically um i've had several racks that have had same issues with sd cards and resync and generally i wanted to talk about um the rack issues on the network at the moment so what i'm finding from obviously i put a video out about this is a lot of the comments are relating to what happens after you put the sd card back in um, and what i want to just recommend to people is that after they flash an sd card Put it in the hotspot, connect it to Ethernet, even if it's not the final resting home of where you're putting that hotspot, still connect it to Ethernet. Don't try and Bluetooth it, leave it for an hour, let it run its updates, let it sync to the chain and then try Bluetooth. Obviously, if you find that um, it's still not increasing in block height at that point, you might want to try a reboot. But generally, if you try and disturb that process too early, it can cause issues and it has caused issues in some people's hotspots. So remember to do the Ethernet step. Obviously, when you flash an SD card, the Wi-Fi details don't save. So put a plug in it on Ethernet, not running a Bluetooth report really does help you. And the final FAQ question of the week comes from Monkey and he says, thanks for keeping us all up to date with the Helium Network. You're welcome, buddy. I enjoy producing the videos, so hopefully you enjoy watching them too. His questions are all around light hotspots. Um, when will they take effect? Will we see the effect on them instantly? And finally, he asks, um, when light hotspots are here, does that mean we can remove the SD cards? Obviously, discussed in the previous section of this video, um, there's now a de defined timeline for light hotspots. So um, whilst there are stages to this, and it's important you notice that, that, that the effects won't take effect till the last change. So. It, it, we're talking months rather than weeks here, um, but once that's done, it will be a plug and play system. Um, in regards to the SD card and being able to remove them after like light hotspots are ready, the, the simple answer is no, right? So the SD cards store a copy of the operating system. Currently they store the miner of blockchain data and um, packet folder. Um, basically the changes to light gateways mean they still need gateway RS, they still need a packet folder, but they don't store the blockchain. The blockchain was where the SD cards were getting worn from all the ex excessive writes and reads. So that goes away. Um, currently, I have a hotspot in place that's um, just needed an SD card change recently, but that was in service for a year. Um, with the light like, hotspot software, I, I think this will last multiple years. So much less writes, much less wear, and it just means that they'll last longer. But we can't remove them because they still contain the operating system and the software needed to run um, Helium hotspots. And that's it for another week's video. Um, thanks for all your comments. And remember, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll answer them in next week's video. If you want to catch me live, I'll be on Gristle Crew uh, next week at Tuesday at 10, 10 a.m. PST. So you can catch me there if you want to see me. Bye for now.